five very interesting things happened in the world of electrification in 2021. Those things will continue to happen in 2022. And these are the five things you should be looking out for. Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back to everyone else. Fantastic to have you all. Hope you've had an awesome day, an awesome morning, awesome evening, wherever you are in the world. You know what? Five things happened in 2021 and will continue to happen in 2022. Here is what they are. Now, the past year has been remembered for how the pandemic has affected all of our lives in different ways. But one of the most significant things that people aren't talking about that actually happened last year is the coming age of electric vehicles. Is the point in which we hit that tipping point and the world starts to transition to electric cars as quickly as when they transition from old Nokia phones to new smartphones. So massive growth in European EV sales is number one. The most obvious sign that electric vehicles are coming, whether you like it or not, has been the huge and continual growth in sales in Europe. Now, in an automotive market that has been seriously crippled, by a chip shortage, just as it was recovering from the COVID lockdowns of 2020 and early 2021, EVs managed to post significantly increased sales and share every single month in the European Union and the UK in 2021. And the same exact thing happened in China. Now in the UK, electric vehicles doubled their share and volume in November 2021 compared to 2020. Plug-ins were at 23% of the European Union market in October, having made up just 4% in October 2019. So 4% two years ago to 23% two years later. That is an astronomical difference. If we saw a similar multiple happen, we'd be looking at about 80% of the market being electric next year. It's not going to go that quickly but it will be far. Now the Tesla Model 3 even managed to be the number one selling car in Europe in September. Now, some people are saying that EVs will be the majority of European car sales as soon as 2023. Obviously, there's gonna be some things that slow that process down, such as fast charging infrastructure in different cities that lags behind EV sales in some places. But if the growth trends continue that we saw last year, the majority of new car sales will be EVs in just a few years. It's insane and it's great news. Point number two, this isn't just about Tesla now. This is about an entire market. You've got to remember that the world's biggest electric car market is China, by far the biggest. And growth of electric cars of China in China has been insane. I'll put a link in the description below to my spreadsheet about the showing you the car sales in China in December of 2021. You can check out all the brands there. You can see the numbers they sold in that month to give you an understanding of what's actually going on outside of Tesla. Now, don't get me wrong, Tesla is extremely important and significant to this global transition to electric cars. However, manufacturers other than Tesla have started taking EVs seriously in 2021. A few of them have anyway. Alongside the overall market growth, a number of brands have emerged or re-emerged as big players. At the cheap end of the price scale, you've got Aura, which is owned by Great Wall Motors. Their electric car sales started to significantly increase in the fourth quarter of 2021, as they started to go global. The same goes for MG, the former British brand, has been redefining the value end of the electric market with the MG5 EV the MG5 EV Long Range, and the MG ZS EV Long Range, which has been incredibly popular here in Australia. Now, the latter in particular with its 273 mile WLTP range and its strong features for a very good price set a new benchmark for EV affordability when it was released at the end of 2020. Now, obviously, MG is a Chinese brand, but Kia, in very stark contrast to its neighbor, Japan, is increasingly starting to focus on electrification. Originally, Hyundai said, well, only a few years ago, that Tesla vehicles were toys. They've changed their tune drastically recently. Hyundai launched its standalone electric vehicle, the Ionic brand, in 2021 with the Ionic 5. And just in the last week, it shut down its fossil fuel engine development team to focus only 
on electric cars. Sister brand Kia released the excellent EV6 based on the same platform as the Ionic 5. Further models are gonna come in 2022. Now, obviously, Kia and Hyundai have figured out the fact that, well, yeah, the market wasn't going where we thought it was, and now we need to focus on electric cars. We're gonna stop development of our petrol cars and focus on what customers actually want, right? Now, I haven't even spoken yet about Volkswagen, who have been focusing on EVs more than any other legacy auto manufacturer. Then there's a lot more to come from the brand in 2022. Now, obviously, there's a lot of other Chinese brands other than MG who are selling up a storm in China and are about to launch outside of China, including BYD, NIO, and Xpeng. Now, this avalanche of new electric cars in 2021 is set to continue with even more power in 2022. It's going to be an amazing year like I keep going on about. Point number three, hydrogen. Yeah, it was a joke and it's even more of a joke now. Its days are limited. Hydrogen has been tested. Hydrogen was touted by BMW, Toyota, Hyundai, and others as the future for emissions-free transportation. That, was, that had been said for decades, in fact, but its status of constantly being the next thing without ever actually arriving has led some to call it hopium, and its proponents, hopium addicts. Yep, if you're still Dreaming of a hydrogen future, I'm sorry, but you're a hopogen addict. I'm sorry, but you're a hopium addict. Then there's been some clear signs in 2021 that some companies are now giving up on hydrogen, at least for passenger vehicles anyway. Now, Honda discontinued its Clarity FCV fuel cell car in mid-2021 because why? One reason, very, very slow demand and sales. Volkswagen's Herbert Diess has ruled out any interest in hydrogen for Volkswagen. Now, just a few days after the reports of Hyundai ceasing fossil fuel engine development, the company signaled it has put the development of its Genesis fuel cell vehicle permanently on hold. Now, even the biggest, most ridiculous hydrogen evangelist, Toyota, has faltered in its commitment. In December, the Japanese giant announced it would be building 30 electric vehicles by 2030 with prices announced for its first one, the BZ4X, coming this year. Point number four, EV stocks will continue to be hot in 2022. There's been billions of dollars poured into EV stocks, whether that be batteries, renewable energy, electric cars, funky electric cars that I've talked about on the channel, one that I've actually put in a deposit to buy, which has a 1,000 mile range. I'll put a link in the description below to that crazy car, 1,000 miles of range, and it costs about 40,000 US dollars. This is crazy. This trend will continue in 2022. Now, there's been a lot of hype, additionally, for companies like Ford, General Motors, Rivian, Lucid, Xpeng, Neo, Leoto, Tesla, and more. That hype will continue next year. Stocks will be overpriced, underpriced, overpriced, depends on where you see that company going in the future. But don't expect the hype and the hyperbole to end anytime soon. Be wary of one thing, Legacy Auto promising more than it can actually deliver. Yeah, Legacy Auto realized the writing is on the wall. If they don't transition to EVs very soon, well, what happens to their stock price? It starts to go down. Less cash flow available to the company. Brand image suffers, sales suffer. It's a virtuous or non-virtuous cycle. So, Legacy Auto are promising big things. The question here is, can they actually deliver on their big promises? They're saying they're investing, in the case of Volkswagen, $100 billion on EVs. Toyota is making big promises now. Ford is making big promises. Lots of different companies are making big promises. But making EVs at scale is hard. So make sure you do your homework when it comes to assessing what companies are saying and what they're actually doing which in many cases is two different things. Point number five, battery production locally is absolutely essential to a company's competitive financial success. I just made a video, extremely important, something that people are not really recognizing and something people are not even talking about at all. Before I made that video, there was no information about this on YouTube anywhere whatsoever. 
That was CATL building a new, well, not building, but opening an enormous gigafactory to manufacture batteries for Tesla, literally only kilometers down the road from their gigafactory in Shanghai, which will be ramping up next year. Having that very cheap local battery production just down the road is a massive advantage for Tesla. Companies need local battery production. Over the last year, there's been increasing and welcome focus on the total life carbon footprint of vehicles. On the one hand, this has been driven by attempts to discredit the green credentials of EVs. But it has also highlighted how polluting global supply chains can actually be. In 2020, China produced 77% of global lithium-ion batteries and is expected to increase its share even when more figures are announced for 2021. China already has an even greater share of production of raw elements like cobalt, even though it doesn't dominate their mining. It dominates their refining. Now, with China's dirty electricity grid, the need to ship those batteries around the world means its dominance is not really that good for its carbon footprint for EVs that are made with Chinese batteries. It's also not that great for competitiveness globally in terms of keeping manufacturing in different countries and not having it all go to one country who would then hold the monopoly. Now, this is why the 2021 announcements of local battery gigafactories from Volkswagen, Stellantis, and Ford, and even General Motors as well, have been extremely important for the market. The partnership between Volvo and Northvolt is very important, as is the UK's British Volt startup. These companies need raw materials, putting considerable emphasis on the huge lithium deposits in the Upper Rhine Valley of Germany that Vulcan Energy Resources hopes to exploit, as well as a potential lithium supply in Cornwall that Cornish Lithium and British Lithium are both targeting. Now, obviously for EVs to be more green, as much of the production as possible needs to be brought more locally. That doesn't only increase how green the cars are though, that increases that company's ability to compete on price, which is extremely important when we have China aiming to take over much of the global automotive market by 2030. So those are my five points. Let me know if you think I've missed anything or if you think there's anything else important that we should be looking at in 2022. Or just let me know what your plans are for 2022. Do you plan on buying an electric car this year? Which model are you considering? Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.